All right, now, everybody, quiet, listen to me. We're going to start a show. Now, some of you people have been with me before. You know it's going to be a tough grind, but we're going to have a show. And greetings, one and all. Thank you. Oh, my gosh, I'm over. Wow, well, this is, it's contagious, the... One part of the room starts and the other part of the room continues. Please, folks, please, I'm begging you, we must start the show. Be seated. I am humbled and indeed uh, encouraged by your support. We have uh, the great uh, producer and commissioner of Mark's Madness, Albert, with us today. Albert, thank you. And Kim, watching all things news-related. Kim, how are you? a lot of news in the last... Uh, 24 hours, and as I mentioned um, yesterday, uh, there's a big political news that John Rothman will help us decode at the bottom of this hour, but there's also Earth news. Um, major quake in Taiwan, we'll talk about that. We've got some wild pictures from there and some um, some stories about what's going on there that may uh, very much pertain to what might happen here in California. So uh, there's that as well. And of course, speaking of the planet, it's the planet, stupid, is Wednesdays. And uh, Belinda will join us with news of the environment and the planet. And there's some good news and some not so good news. And then, of course, the major news of this show occurs today. And uh, I don't need to tell you what it is, but I'm still going to tell you what it is. It's um, it's the it's the finals in Mark's Madness. Yeah. Yesterday, we saw the final four shape uh, shape up, and actually, Albert, you as commissioner did predict this very thing. <clears throat> Excuse yeah. me. You predicted yeah, this very uh, scenario. I wonder if you can fill us in on what's happened, please, sir. Well, I thought it's the final four, and but it seemed like our Elite Eight had the closest of the voting, and it just wasn't that close last night. It was a runaway between Chit 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 and 30% Idiots, so... So uh, again, just to review for us who played off yesterday in the final four. It was thirty. It was uh, Chit Chit Chit, of course, which is the Chit-chit. the odds-on favorite to win it all. And and Chit 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 went against what yesterday? A uh, producer, no idea. So too much. Oh, to yeah. Yeah. Whoever yeah. is producing this oh, yeah. thing has no idea what they're doing. It made it all the way to the final four, though that drop. And then what was the second hour? Thirty percent went up against what? Uh, for, a former champion at the number three seed. Why are you yelling? Uh, wow. Why yeah. are you yelling? Why are you yelling? There's I'm... always been mm. in this country 30 to 35 percent idiots. But that's been settled now. So 30 percent now plays off today against Chit Chit Chit. Is that the uh, way it's going to go down? That is correct. And that is actually a number nine seed in Chit 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 and number 26 seed, the 30 35 percent idiots. This is, is a Mark's wild. Madness of Cinderella stories, and let's get it <laughs> on. Now. I can't believe it. Mark's Madness. You're damn straight. It's the finals. If you're not part of this, you're missing history, ladies and gentlemen. You'll vote for either Chit Chit Chit. Or you'll vote for... There's always been, in this country, 30 to 35% idiots. Again, either... Ch-ch-chip. Or... There's always been, in this country, 30 to 35% idiots. You can vote live through the entire show. Two full hours of live voting. And then after the live voting is concluded, you can continue... Most people take the show in on delay. And in some other platform, often, go to the YouTube platform... Go to our community section. If you go to the Mark Thompson Show on YouTube, it'll say shorts, live, videos, community. Click on community and you can vote. I think Albert will let you vote until midnight tonight. Mm-hmm. Yes, I will let you vote just like just like normal. And here we are for the updated standings Brackets. as we are in the finals. Sally and P. Dibner and LJS wow. tied at the top with 54 best possible points. And you can see that a lot of people have their future riding on Chit Chit Chit. But uh, Sally, so key, has her future riding on 30 to 35% idiot. You can see under Pick Champion there on the right. That is so brilliant. I mean, no matter what, I give Sally and SR Donner and also Cheryl Peterson mad respect for picking 30 to 35% idiots to go all the way. Because I thought. 
that 30 to 35 percent would be bounced earlier. I mean, I, I know it's kind of a crowd favorite, as again I said yesterday. It's because of substantively people agree with uh, the notion that 30 to 35 percent mm -hmm. of uh, American electorate uh, may be, you know, uh, less than sharp. But uh, that said, and Jim Avila, I think, has a lot of love on here. But that said, I just didn't think it would go all this way. It's really, um, it's really something. There's never been anything like it. Come on, where are my idiots at, says Robert. There's <laughs> never been anything like this. <laughs> uh, never underestimate the power of idiots. Um, yeah, very well put. I am, um, I am very impressed with our entire crew and all of you who participated in the Mark's Madness thus far. It's been a lot of fun. And uh, today we, we will find out the winner but we'll crown a champion tomorrow right Kamish? i mean it's tomorrow there will be a, a champion crowned and uh i'm excited to see who it's going to be it's, i think this was going to be our closest vote yet next and year. the champion gets what Kamish? um a new car! No, no 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 not a new car not a new car uh we're still working it out i am going to do something uh albert i'm gonna I, i'm gonna figure out something We'll have trophy. a package of something. Or yeah, something. we'll have a prize package or trophy. Um, so we'll put it something together, I promise, for the for the winner. It's very, very exciting. How about this big shout out? I want to B.O. What a B.O. Big shout out. Thanks for so uh thanks so little for an absolute trail of tears as you've all <laughs> turned away from obviously superior picks like Santos and Kasem. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean Santos was strong. I thought Santos would go further than 30% uh, idiots. Yeah. Santos was shown the door. Hey, Mark. It's George Santos here. I can't believe that drop didn't do better. And then Casey's... You know, they do this to me all the time. I don't know what the hell they do it for. Casey was shown the door also. I have two teams left, says B.O. Still, can we agree the most overlooked drop this year is regular stock? And regular stock was in the competition, right, Albert? Yeah. And regular stock. I come from regular, regular stock. Regular it was stock. in the play-ins, actually, and it never made it, uh, yeah. never made it in. You're right. I think it is the most overlooked. Gosh. Clarence Thomas. Man. I Maybe think... next year we'll do our version of the NIT uh, Mark's, Mark's Madness, this, the drops that didn't make it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, Why the, alongside of the main tournament. <laughs> right, a parallel tourney. I love parallel that. Parallel tourney. Yeah. Uh, I think Jim Avila is going to take this one. Well, Kim is kind of doing that reverse curse thing yeah, that people I, do. Yeah. I see it happening. Yeah. I think it's good. I know. It's good. I, well, I um oh believe me, I'd like to see it. There's I, always yeah. been in this country yeah. thirty yeah. to thirty five percent idiots. But uh, uh idiots rule, says uh, Chris. Yeah. Christopher Rubino says idiots rule. <laughs> idiots rule truly may be the most penetrating, piercing commentary that one could find for this time in which we live. Idiots rule. A chit 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 mug. We will get Vilma. Thank you for that. We're gonna put something together on um on the merch side to memorialize winners today. So mm -hmm. anyway, thanks guys for that. The Mark Thompson Show. You can vote till midnight again in the community section, but right now in live voting, and Albert will keep us posted. A, a bru I'll get to the Trump stuff and the politics. We will get to all of that. John Rothman joins bottom of the hour as well. But this earthquake in Taiwan, huge. Um, more than 900 injured, nine killed. Um, 50 on minibuses that were headed to a national park are missing. Here are some pictures. The epicenter was just off Taiwan's east coast. And you can see this, oh, I think, pool. is a hotel yeah. or an apartment. Yeah. Whew. Some buildings tilted at wild angles. There's the water coming down the side of the building. This is, if you're listening on the podcast, it might be worth a look. I suppose you could. Yeah. Maybe uh, YouTube this stuff yourself or whatever. But we've put together a few of these um, really Land chilling slides. pictures that come out of it. Yeah, landslides, mm. massive landslides triggered. It was a 7.2 magnitude quake. Here's a shot of a uh, highway or freeway that was jolted. And dust, they say, could be rising near an island. Part of the island slid into the sea. Oh, wow. Uh, it was, again, the epicenter just offshore about 8 a.m. 
Greenwich Mean Time. It was uh, late afternoon in California, and that's the way a lot of these buildings basically held up or succumbed to this kind. Of, this is a huge quake. I mean, think about it. Yeah. Um, Magnitude yeah, 7.4. Yeah, quakes out there. It's an island. It's uh, always the tsunamis are the ones that you're worried about in the surrounding areas as well. There were huge tsunami warnings up almost right away, as you might imagine, in Japan and beyond. And um, they, you know, I mean, they're no strangers to seismic activity. It's a fairly seismically active area, but this is a huge, huge quake. So uh, they'd already, they evacuated 70 people trapped in tunnels uh, near Weiland City. Two Germans were evacuated. It's just always interesting what, you know, uh, foreigners who were not native to uh, that area who are rescued as well. They had lost contact with 50 workers aboard four minibuses. That's uh, the story I was referring to. Headed to a hotel in a national park. Rescuers are still looking for them. Another 80 people are trapped in a mining area. It's not clear if they're inside the mine or what the story is. Um... This is the biggest earthquake I've ever experienced, said this um, woman who's been there for a long time. She's in her 70s. Um, and again, the government put the number of injured at 946. Well, they think that toll is going to go up. I would think so as well, yeah. yeah. Um, major supplier of chips um, to Apple and NVIDIA. Mm -hmm. Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing said that it had evacuated some fabrication plants and safety systems were operating normally. But, you know, that that's the business side of things. The high-speed rail operator said no damage or injuries on their trains in Taiwan. But they are delaying train service to make inspections. And the quake was the biggest since the 7-6 in 1999. That killed about 2,400 people. Mm. Yeah. And damaged or destroyed 50,000 buildings. So we watch this situation in Taiwan and our heart is with them, especially uh, being in California as we right. are. We know of the threat and um, it's a real one. And uh, and as I say, we'll watch it and Kim will continue to update it through the morning. So. The Mark Thompson Show. Israel is blaming a misidentification for the strike that uh, killed a, the Gaza aid workers. This is a situation that is grim and getting grimmer. The Wall Street Journal, with the latest, saying that Israel, through an initial investigation into the strike that killed seven aid workers in Gaza, is saying that its forces had wrongly identified their vehicles as hostile targets. And of course, there's getting, they're getting Israel as international condemnation. It's a very tough time. And, and I think what's interesting about uh, Israel is... There is by no means a coalition behind Benjamin Netanyahu. So he is getting less popular by the hour, too, within Israel, I'm talking about. So when they say, you know, Israel's doing this, Israel's doing that, um, it's a it's true. The government is pursuing this situation and, and having to navigate what is a an incredibly uh, difficult and, um, well, a situation that's just fraught with so many problems, maybe even in, in fr from the initial act to uh, the situation they're in now. But I mention it because Netanyahu's political fortunes really appear to be headed down. And this strike that hit workers with that World Central Kitchen, that's the uh, Jose Andreas crew, um, that's a real, again, bad look for Israel and a even as they pursue a righteous goal of rooting out Hamas, it speaks to the incredibly difficult situation to in any way root out a terrorist organization that cocoons itself within a civilian population. So um, uh, this is a, I mean, when you lose the U.S., which is pretty much uh, a staunch supporter mm -hmm. of that nation, you know that things have really gone sideways. And it's a, in any case, on this one incident, they are blaming, at least initially, 
a misidentification for the strike that killed those aid workers. Oh, it's just there awful. it is. Yeah, it's uh, positively awful. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And I think the callousness with which, you know, the statement afterward, I, I don't know if it was Netanyahu, but someone was asked about it and they said, well, you know, this is the price of war. Well, what? I mean, you know, obviously. I don't know who said that. I'd like to know. I mean, it's an I, error. I, always, I mean, it's. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, I, don't I, don't know. Know. I, I don't know. I don't know. One thing I don't like is uh, something, uh, quoting something incendiary without knowing mm-hmm. who said it. But um, yeah, you're right. Whoever said that, it's a, it's a hard, it's an, it's an awful thing to say. I mean, uh, it's a. Um, this is a, a terrible humanitarian crisis, um, and uh, it points up so many of these divided loyalties within that region. It's a really, it's a really rough spot. So. The Mark Thompson Show. I did see, and I've really read up on the solar eclipse, and I will tell you, I um, can't wait to um, share some of what uh, I have learned deep knowledge in the solar eclipse. But before I do, uh, Albert, I saw with some interest the story of the cruisers. You know, uh, we ourselves like to cruise. And the cruisers on the Norwegian cruise line who missed getting back to the boat in time, they uh, went on quite the journey, as you may be aware. They've made, they've really become international celebrities, these people, as they were more than an hour late to the cruise. You know, they give you very specific times you've got to be back. You can't miss the boat. Yeah, yeah, and they really do. uh, The one thing you know, and you cannot, (laughs) Mark, you're full of good news today. Yeah, I'm sorry (laughs) about that. I don't know why I uh, did start with a really downer of a a little chunk. Um, And I guess it was Netanyahu who said that. Thank you, Carol. Yeah, Um, yeah, so that really, it's damnable. Um, The... I thought you hated cruises, Mark. Well, I did hate them, and then I kind of told, I won't retell the story, but I, I've, I'm now on board with them, um, up until and through the point that they lose your baggage. But here's what happens <laughs> on a cruise. They make it very clear to you, you got to be back by such and such a time, because if you're not, we're leaving. And if you're not on board, your stuff is leaving without you, and it's on you to catch up with it. So these people, eight of them, didn't make that time. And then they go on this journey. Now, I think you could make this into a movie. I think this is a good little uh, comedy sort of... Albert, share a little bit, and then I'll give you my 15-second elevator pitch on how it could be a great movie. Go ahead. A mad dash for passengers to catch their cruise ship, triggering a seven-day ordeal. We've flown. It's actually seven countries we've been in in 48 hours. Jay and Jill Campbell and six other Norwegian cruise passengers were on a 21-day voyage up the coast of Africa. But last Wednesday, it all went wrong for the group after they left the ship for a private excursion to the African island country of Sao Tome and Principe, but didn't make it back by the 3 p.m. deadline. And the ship... By the way, uh, stop there, Albert, if you would, please. Stop, because this is a huge distinction and a pro tip that I've learned. If you're on a private uh, excursion... Mm-hmm. There's not one set up by the cruise ship. You have almost no chance of them holding the cruise ship up for your tardiness. It just doesn't happen. If you're on a an excursion that was set up by the cruise ship, it's one of their excursions, there is a lot more wiggle room on everything with that, okay? But it's much more expensive mm-hmm. to go on an excursion set up by the cruise, which is why so many people, and sometimes even better to go on a private one. But the minute they say private in that report, it's it's a crucial piece of information in evaluating what happened. So go ahead, Albert. To the local port agents, even though the couple says the private tour operator notified the captain they were going to be late. And despite the Coast Guard's attempt to get them on the ship, which was still docked. We truly believe that, you know, although there's a set of rules uh, or policies that the ship may may have followed, they follow those rules too rigidly. The passengers arranged to board again in Banjul, Gambia, traveling there on their own expense. But the cruise line says the ship couldn't dock due to weather. In a statement, Norwegian Cruise told NBC News... That's, by the way, the the second point. Stop it, Albert. That's the bad beat in the story to me. Like, you missed the boat, but you did, to be fair to you, get to the next port. 
and then they didn't dock because there wasn't it was too low a tide and they couldn't make it all the way in that's they the bad can't help beat. it I mean, what yeah. is, that's not their fault. It's not the the ship's fault. They can't dock there, right? And it's yeah. but it's but the people did get all the way to the next place. So go ahead, Albert. Once the guests did not make it back to the ship at the previously communicated ship, uh, we all aboard, you go, ahead. And the go ahead. Local port agent to assist with obtaining the necessary visas for them to rejoin at the next available port. Noting the group was an hour late when the ship initially left without them. Still, the Campbells telling the Today Show. I believe that they really forgot that they are people working in the hospitality industry. Tonight, the cruise line saying the unexpected adventure has been resolved. All eight guests reboarding the ship this morning in Senegal. Aaron McLaughlin, NBC News. Well, there you go. Everything Thanks is, uh, it's what, a, a happy uh, Hollywood ending. Uh, by the way, that lady's uh, comment, which is, you know, they have to remember they're in the hospitality business. Uh, this just in, you have to remember that there are a bunch of other people on a ship and they're on a schedule too. Yeah. And you're supposed to be back in time and you weren't. That I think is important to recall as well. In other words, you're not the only one on vacation. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm, I'm sympathetic on some level because I don't really know what delayed them, but an hour is a long time. And they really make it clear you've got to be back. I mean, it's, it's, it's so... Um, it's so clearly kind of the prime directive when they put you out onto whatever landing plank they they extend for whatever port they stop in. It's so excruciatingly clear that I really don't have a lot of sympathy for these people. They tell you, we will not hold the ship for you. That's right. And they mean yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. But this is interesting, Jason, you're right. Did I hear right? The ship was still there at the dock the first time they were late. Yeah. This is the one place, because we all, I think, had some version of this maybe happen in our lives or, or witnessed it, right. where the ship itself is there, and they were tendering people out to the ship, you know, in those smaller boats. And if the ship is there, why couldn't they, you know, again, the ship is docked. Why can't they, with the Coast Guard tendering people out, get those people on board? I I ask that same question to myself, but um, I don't know what's involved in in you know there there are personnel involved in embarking and disembarking. There is a bunch of identification. There's a you know they've got metal detectors. There's all this stuff that has to happen, and perhaps some of that personnel isn't on you know at their stations any longer. Some of them come from the shore. So anyway. Um, William says, I was on a cruise ship, waited for people running to catch the ship while everyone on the ship was booing at them. The captain <laughs> then reamed them out over the PA. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, wow. That's pretty cool. I would have liked to have heard some video. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, have heard the audio on a video. It's, um, I like the I Love Lucy episode where she missed the ship and they flew her out on a helicopter. I didn't see that <laughs> one. <laughs> uh, I will uh, just... Um, Oh, I've lost my thought. I'm now, now I'm seeing all these uh, comments, this which are text, really pretty great. Yeah. yeah. But don't you think the adventure that the eight went on could be a movie? I think it oh, could. Yeah. You know, it used it, in act one, they missed the ship. And then as they begin through Africa to try to go to various ports, I mean, they have to, you know, they encounter all of these, you know, people who are, uh, you know, indigenous people you, you right. find uh, who are um, locals, they don't quite understand. I mean, you begin this, you could go totally comedy. It feels very Adam Sandler, maybe. I don't know. Uh, take it. It's my pitch for the day. Um, <laughs> uh, breaking news about Truth Social. Um, oh, his lead is going to plummet like this Truth Social dog. You're talking about Trump. We'll get to Trump next with uh, John Rothman. It's dropped $9.00. For a net loss of eight hundred million, says Kentucky Controls. This is for the um, the stock, the DJT stock. So, um, there were a couple people who were convicted of insider trading. I was going to get to this. that story, oh, Kim. Okay, I absolutely sorry. agree. No, I love yeah. that you mention it. I was going to get to your news. What am I on time? Yeah, I've got still got another minute. So yeah. uh, I am um, the Mark Thompson Show. It was going to be my. Um, Law and disorder. You want to do a turbo law and disorder about these yeah. guys, Albert? Uh -huh. How do you feel about that? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Here's some law and disorder. 
In the criminal justice system, the people... Pimps, addicts, thieves, bums, winos, girls who can't keep an address, and men who don't care... ...are represented by two separate yet equally important groups. A cop, a flatfoot, a bull, a dick, John Law, you're the fuzz, the heat, your poison, your trouble, your bad news. These are their stories. It's hard for me to believe that anything corrupt could go on around Donald Trump, no. but I apparently... This I did everything right and they <laughs> indicted me. Yeah, the head of Rocket One and his brother charged with trading on inside information about Donald Trump's group's plan to go public with the stock. What? Yeah. Two men pleading guilty just this morning to insider trading and securities... And the company that ultimately took Donald Trump's media business public, Michael Schwartzman, 53, head of the Miami-based venture capital firm Rocket One Capital, and his brother Gerald Schwartzman, they're up to their hips in Schwartzmanness. <laughs> Each pleaded guilty to one count of securities fraud before U.S. District Judge Louis Lyman in Manhattan. And there they are, the two of them. Rocket One's chief investment officer, Bruce Gerlich, is scheduled to face trial also on related charges on April 29th. What? Yeah, the whole family of uh, investors, turns out, uh, had a lot of inside info, and they traded on that inside info. So, I, I think I'm the most honest human being, no, not, perhaps, that God ever created. It's not about you, sir, but it is about the people around you. Prosecutors said that these three guys were illegally trading on inside information about Trump Media and Technology Group. That's that TMTG and the plans of that group to go public through a merger with that blank check company. That's the SPAC company we talk about. It's also called a blank check company. TMTG operates True Social, which is, of course, the main social media platform of Donald Trump. So prosecutors said that those three guys signed confidentiality agreements when they were approached to become early investors in digital world acquisition, that's the blank check company, okay? The agreements required them to keep information that they learned confidential and not trade the company's securities in the open market. Well, when they heard that the company was in merger talks with uh, TMTG, the media company, prosecutors said that the three of them tipped others and bought Digital World Securities, selling them, of course, after the deal was announced on October 20th, they made $22 million in illegal profit. What? Yeah. Michael and Cheryl Schwartzman said in court that they knew what they were doing was wrong when they traded on this non-public information. Gerald said, I've made a terrible mistake. They just wanted the money so bad. Yeah. I mean, if they'd know, then they'd... you can buy a Movado watch in Sam's. <laughs> well, he could have just bought the Movado watch in Sam's. There they are. So, uh, as the story of Truth Social turned DJT continues to unfold, there is that piece of information on insider trading. They plead guilty, and that's law and disorder for today. Tune in again next time for more Law and Disorder on The Mark Thompson Show. All right, that's it. Let's roll. Hey, let's be careful out there. I have John Rothman uh, after Kim's News, and we are in the middle, as you know. And this is the time of year. Now, it's, uh, Mark's, Mark's Madness. Mark's Madness. Pretty crazy. Two fan favorites going off against each other. I, I can't believe how did we get to this place? Or we're choosing between, I guess it's inevitable, you know, but Ch -ch it's chit 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 versus. There's always been in this country 30 to 35 percent idiots. Okay. It's, Ch -ch -ch or it's, there's always been mm. in this country 30 to 35 percent idiots. One goes on. You can vote until midnight in the community section, but live right now on YouTube. I don't know, Albert. Do you have any early returns for us, sir? Voting is close. That's all I'll say. But, oh, um, I love it. Voting is close. How chat, cool. Albert, thank you. Yeah, right. but make sure if you're in the chat, vote there. Vote in the community tab after the show. We'll yeah, you can voting. only vote in the community tab after the show is after done. The okay. Show. Uh, the great John Rothman next after Kim's News. Mark Thompson Show. The Mark Thompson Show. Oh. 
on the Mark Thompson Show. I'm Kim McAllister, and this report is sponsored by CoachellaValleyCoffee.com. Matter of fact, my Coachella Valley coffee tea is expected to arrive any moment. Ah, mm-hmm. Very nice. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Got a bounce in my step from the coffee. That's right. Bravo. There is a, a wrinkle, they call it on, on CNN's headline. There's a wrinkle in the eclipse situation that's because severe thunderstorms and parts of the path of totality could get in the way of the view for some people and also could bring risks for people who are traveling to see the eclipse so not only might you not be able to see it but it might bring danger on your your ride or your trip to see it what the hell is going on in the united states of america man that is troubling the science is ridiculous all right man there's a lot of people. By who the way, cut. Path of Totality is a great name for a band. Path of <laughs> it Totality. Totally this, is. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah. They've got severe thunderstorms possible in parts of the Southern Plains, Mississippi Valley. This area could completely cover up the view for some people traveling there. Um, but when people are leaving their eclipse destinations, there's a chance that they could run into some trouble. So um, this is. A 100-mile-wide path, the path of totality, from Texas to Maine, passes over cities like Dallas, Indianapolis, Cleveland, Buffalo, and New York. But parts of Texas, including Dallas, uh, also Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, are at an increased risk of some pretty damaging thunderstorms on Monday, especially in the evening hours. And that could really get in the way of all this. And this is the time of year they get those mm -hmm. severe thunderstorms, yeah. Yeah, so hopefully people that spend a lot of money to go and see the eclipse, you know, and what a bummer that you would travel all that way and then get to see nothing. Right? So the eclipse, but still, once the eclipse happens, God comes back? When does God come back? Right after the eclipse? Or like, what, does he wait? It's possible, I'm a little unclear on the it's religious God's side. God's just checking out. I mean, maybe God's not coming back. Oh, I didn't even consider that. That's Gosh, the new, okay. yeah. Man. yeah. No, hopefully, we hope that doesn't happen, right? Man. I think that was last Sunday. Last Sunday, right? Uh, oh, last Sunday yeah. comes back. I'm, yeah. al- I'm, I'm always yeah. running a week behind. I Anyway. Just I, about. I this is a word from the Lord, <laughs> and he's not happy. <laughs> all right. Just about all the East Coast right now, from Florida all the way up to New Jersey, is at risk of severe thunderstorms. Oh, They've no. Got- and that's a lot of people who, I mean, it's in the Northeast. We're in Northeast mm-hmm. and Ohio Valley, and then the Central Plains, I think, have the chance to see it, right? That's right. my understanding. But my mom, is... it says, Ms. Organic, in Path of Totality. Oh. I sent her some eclipse classes. Fine. I hope that she's maybe in one of those areas that isn't. Um, the weather forecast here in Austin, says John Watson, is uh, looking grim. Yeah, no. unfortunately. But this is right now, the East Coast from Florida to New Jersey at risk of severe thunderstorms. They've got tornado watches in effect for parts of Florida, North Carolina, Virginia, Maryland, and Delaware. You're saying for today, right now. For today, right now. More than 32 million people in those parts of the country are under threat of tornadoes, hail, and damaging wind gusts. So, yeah, Mm. a lot of weather. The fate of this controversial Texas immigration law is in the hands of a federal appeals court in New Orleans. A three-panel judge, uh, uh, three panels of of judges uh, for the Fifth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals is offering the federal government and the legal team representing Texas the chance today to oppose or defend Texas State Bill 4. The Texas Solicitor General Aaron Nielsen telling the judges the law empowers police agencies to arrest undocumented migrants that it will not lead to racial profiling. Y'all can all go to hell and I'm going back to Texas. Well, the thing is that they're allowing, I mean, the the law would allow the suspicion. You could pick up people based on the suspicion that they're undocumented, which is Really, I mean, that casts a very wide net. Yeah, I mean, how do you guarantee it? You can't stand up in court and guarantee that when you just don't know. Yeah, there's no due process for those people in that moment. It's really the Wild West. Leaders in Sacramento are trying to ban the use of a commercial weed killer, which has been linked to Parkinson's disease. Paraquat 
is a highly toxic herbicide used in the United States for weed and grass control. And a new bill by Assemblymember Lisa Friedman would end the use of Paraquat on fields and orchards in California by 2026. That would be great. And this is why you need an oversight agency and you need some oversight. This is a poison that is used and many are exposed to it. Many smoked it. I may have smoked it with marijuana in the Ooh. late 70s. Yeah, because you've got... Um, it was being used, Paraquat was, to mm -hmm. kill marijuana plants, but many of them didn't die. They ended up in the population. It's That's where I first heard about Paraquat. Mm. Well, an analysis published by the Environmental Working Group shows more than 80% of residents in the Kern County communities of Schaffer and Wasco are in proximity to spraying of almost 180,000 pounds of Paraquat. Workers who handle the substance are twice as likely to develop Parkinson's than those who apply other pesticides. Wow. More than wow. 60 countries have already banned it, Paraquat, but the EPA continues to permit it to be used on crop fields. Outrageous. We are, we are just, when it comes to poisoning populations because business makes more money, if we look the other way on these poisons, mm. we are without peer. We, are, we lead that parade worldwide. Officials in Taiwan fear that the death toll will rise after the strongest earthquake there in 25 years. The magnitude 7.4 quake has killed nearly a dozen people, injured more than 900. Right now, rescuers are making efforts to reach anyone who may be inside severely damaged or collapsed buildings. So that's underway. The founder of the World Kitchen wants Israel to open more pathways for food and medicine in Gaza. Celebrity chef Jose Andres wrote in a New York Times op-ed that Israel is, be is better than blocking food and medicine to civilians. His comments come after an Israeli airstrike killed several of his aid workers in Gaza. The seven deceased workers were reportedly driving in a de-conflicted zone during that attack. This whole billionaire investor uh, succession shakeup thing going on on the Disney board. Oh, yeah. Whew. Yeah. The billionaire investor who wanted to take over will apparently not be on the Disney board of directors. He's Disney's, a Trump pal, I think, isn't he? Yeah, I don't know, but he was so. trying to scoot in and take I'll over. Ask Rothman. I think that's right. Go ahead. Disney shareholders voted to reelect the full board today, handing a defeat to Nelson Peltz. He and a former Disney CFO wanted shareholders to back them and kick out two current board members. Peltz called for Disney's film division to refocus after a couple of flops. They want Disney Plus streaming to compete better with Netflix as well. Disney's chief, Bob Iger, opposing Peltz joining the board, and it looks like Iger emerges victoriously. Well, wow, so Peltz is out. Good day, Peltz sir! Is is, I, I, I'll say this, uh, Peltz is one of those, I think I did a 60 on this, if you go back and look at our shorts. Mm -hmm. Peltz is one of those multi-billionaires who swore off Donald Trump and support of Donald Trump after J6, after what he saw. Then he said, I will never, I'm ashamed that I voted for the man. I'll never vote for him again. I want nothing to do with him. Now mm -hmm. that Nikki Haley's away and that um, DeSantis is gone, he is now coming back around and he is fundraising out in front for Trump. So that's the other side of this guy who just got voted out of the Disney board. JetBlue Airlines raising the price for checking luggage during peak hours. The fees apply to domestic flights with the first check bag during peak travel times costing another $5 more and the second check bag costing an additional $10 more. JetBlue saying increased fuel costs and higher pay for employees are the reason for the increase in prices there. Driverless cars aren't just giving rides to people. No, Waymo announcing they're teaming up with Uber Eats. So the autonomous vehicle company says its driverless cars will start delivering food to people living in the Phoenix, Arizona area. Well, how do you get the food? I guess you have to run out to the car to get it. There's, <laughs> nobody... think, or, there's somewhere they dr it drops <laughs> I mean, it off. I mean, I would think there's it's... never been anything like this. Oh, well, you enter a exciting. code and the door unlocks and you reach in and grab your stuff. I don't know. Yeah. And this is their new hoax. Yeah, that's right. So far, only a select number of of restaurants are participating but people can ordering meals can opt out of the option if they want their things delivered by a human driver and yeah no 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 yeah there's a no 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 option if you want uh, it. okay the home where marilyn monroe died 
is causing a dispute between city leaders and neighbors in Brentwood. Monroe died in the home more than 60 years ago. The Los Angeles uh, City Councilwoman Tracy Park wants it designated as an historic landmark. She filed the paperwork to prevent the demolition of the house. Neighbors say the status will bring more tourists and trespassers to the neighborhood. And meanwhile, ABC7 in Los Angeles reports the home's owners who live right next door and the Marilyn Monroe estate support a proposal to physically move that house to a more public location. They've right. got a vote on that preservation attempt that could come this week. So That's close to my old place where I used to live. Yeah. Uh, speaking of m- big money, I guess, tonight's Powerball jackpot is above the billion-dollar mark. Time wow. to play. The jackpot is at an estimated $1.09 billion. The cash option just over 527 mil. No one has won the Powerball since January 1st. So... There we go. Could be a big ride. It Good luck, everybody. Be. This report is sponsored by CoachellaValleyCoffee.com. The coffees, the teas, absolutely amazing. Top notch. You can get 10% off just for being a Mark Thompson Show listener by checking at checkout in the little code area, typing in Mark T all together. Your 10% comes right off. Look at that. They've got French roast. They've got tea. They've got all kinds of things there. So again, the code is Mark T at checkout, and you've got a treat just for yourself. This is literally the best coffee I've ever tasted. Mm -hmm. You know how I feel about it, and I recommend uh, you jump on board with both feet to CoachellaValleyCoffee.com. But definitely get the 10% off with Mark T at checkout. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a one-foot jump. That's true. Both feet, kid. Both feet. (laughs) I'm Kim McAllister. This is The Mark Thompson Show. The Mark Thompson Show. It was great. I loved it. How would you handle this? We could try ignoring it, sir. Morning. You cannot say you love your country. Where are my weed smokers at? Stay at home and get baked. I don't know why it's taken so long to get to John Rothman. I think that Kim's news ran long. Uh, Let me just see. I would blame Albert, I guess, first. Albert, thank you. And then I would blame Kim, really. I mean... uh, I blame you. Well, I mean, you can blame me, but I blame you, Kim, because John is a cherished treasure of this show, a brilliant political mind, and I'm just... I blame you. Okay, Kim, we've moved on. Uh, John Rothman, everybody. How about it? He's the host of... Around the Political World with John Rothman, the daily podcast. I blame and no one, one Mark. Wh- wh- I'm just delighted to hear be John, here. Uh, and I blame... Oh, thank you, John. <laughs> John is always full of a, of a happy ebullience, which is really great. And ebullience is a dang word. All right, so, John, I'm... Uh, you know, I, it's a it's an embarrassment of uh, sad riches today as we talk uh, politics in America. The... Uh, let me get to the presidential politics, and then we can get into some other stuff. These swing states, which really decide the elections in this horribly flawed system that we have, in these swing state polls, Trump is now showing either a lead on Biden or a dead heat with Biden. Can you speak to that, please? It's a Wall Street Journal poll. Yeah, I read the, the poll. It's too soon. Uh, you know how things shift. Uh, we are now on April 3rd. I remember the date because it's my wife's birthday, and you know... One never wants to forget that, Uh, but it's just too early to tell. What is clear is that there are a sizable number of people who feel strongly that they will not vote for Trump, a sizable number who say they will not vote for Biden, and the question will be, in the end, which of the sizable numbers triumphs? I'm reading so much, John, about the siphoning off and this is also in early polling if you want to if you consider this poll too early then this would be also falling into that category uh the third party siphoning off of more votes i was seeing in the latest poll from um biden than trump from rfk jr who does continue to rise in the polls and and those numbers appear to come from the biden camp no i disagree i think it comes from the trump camp but it's neither here nor there by the way you heard the question posed on uh, CNN to uh, RFK Jr., uh, who represented the biggest threat to democracy, uh, Biden or Trump. And he said, well, I can make the case that it's Biden. And I thought to myself, that's it. You know, he's going to lose credibility. In the end, I think the third parties will fade. I think they will not have the impact that are talked about now. Third parties generally do fade. But when Donald Trump says the country will cease to exist if he doesn't win the election, and that the 
last election we will ever have may be the one in 2024, he'll be judged harshly, and he should be. I, I, I have to tell you, Mark, too soon, but I think that Donald Trump has so many self-inflicted wounds, they will just continue to grow. And I point out again, key people around Trump are not supporting him, including Mike Pence. Right. I mean, you, you've been really good about pointing out those that have melted away from what would likely be a reflexive support for the GOP candidate. You know, those are high, uh, high profile GOPers usually turn out for the GOP uh, top of ticket candidate. Twenty nine percent of Americans think neither former President Donald Trump nor President Joe Biden are good options this election cycle, according to this is a Gallup poll. Um, Not a surprise. Yeah. Generally, people don't like the people who are nominated. Yeah. 35 percent of voters say Trump would be a good president if reelected compared to 30 percent of those who say the same for Biden. It's an extraordinary fact that you could get more people saying that Trump would be a good president by 5 percent than uh, saying that about Biden. Uh, the public really is remarkable in the way that they've shifted toward Trump amid all of the issues that Trump has. I mean, clear corruption, it would seem, an inability to, you know, add together sort of the simple geopolitical math. The guy knows nothing. And there's just more and more evidence. I mean, all of these, the people have worked with him at the highest levels from, from generals to uh, chiefs of staff. They've the all members come of his and, cabinet. That's right. You know, yeah, Mike I mean, Esper, the former Secretary of Defense. Esper, uh, Secretary of Defense, uh, Bolton, et cetera. I mean, these are people I have no love for, but they are all unified in their their disgust of, of, for Donald Trump as a political figure. And it will make an impact. I don't believe the nation is focused yet, but I think the Democrats are going to turn out ads featuring all the people who are closest to Donald Trump. I think it's going to have a huge impact. And frankly, Donald Trump uh, is his own worst enemy. Can you vote for a candidate for president who says the country will cease to exist if he isn't elected? I mean, give me a break. I mean... You know, this is the kind of rhetoric that you're hearing from the left that uh, the country will cease to exist as a democracy or, or even a flawed democratic republic if Trump is elected. So he's essentially echoing the same stuff. I think it's deliberate. He's trying that's what to he does. That's what yeah. Roy Cohen taught him. Right. Water it down to the him, point that's that. Exactly the way you hit Yeah. Yeah. Exactly right, John. You're right to point out uh, Cohen. Um, so yeah, I just say I try to be objective in my political analysis, but those of you who listen to me on Around the Political World with John Rothman know that I'm going to blast Trump repeatedly. Any person who would want to be president of the United States who talks about immigrants infecting the blood of America, anyone who is an immigrant or the child or grandchild or great-grandchild of an immigrant, you should know he's talking about you. Oh, the immigration thing is crazy, and it's uh, it's been... And it's not a bloodbath. You know, you can now go on Donald Trump's website, or actually it's a slightly different one, and it's uh, uh, the uh, bidenbloodbath.com. Now, you may not like Joe Biden's policy <laughs> on the border. Is that real? Border. Yes. Oh, my God. You may not like Biden's policy on the border, but it's not a bloodbath. And it is absurd what he is saying. And look... Maybe I'm wrong, and maybe I'll be proven wrong, but I believe the good sense of the American people will prevail. They, they know better than this. Let me ask you about what's going on in your city, San Francisco. I say your city because you really have a rich history there. there and is you're a... going to have my good friend Mark Farrell on shortly, who is a former mayor and who is going to run for mayor. And let me tell you, the support for Mark is growing. Yeah, I think he's coming in. When is he coming in, Kim? I think the 18th of this month uh, to talk about uh, the issues involving San Francisco. How would you uh, summarize the issues that you see the city facing that a mayor might actually be able to put a dent in? San Francisco has a weak mayor system, so it's very hard. We also have a board of supervisors, which is, uh, frankly, a circus. Uh, on top of that, Remember, we have commissioners here in San Francisco, but the mayor no longer can fire commissioners. So we have a weak mayor system. Now, the argument is that uh, maybe we should go back to a strong mayor system, but there are pros and cons. In the end, it is the kind of leadership that a mayor offers, which will make all the difference in the world. Aaron Peskin, the president of the Board of Supervisors, is going to run, uh, and uh, he will have a solid number, I'd say about a quarter of the city, who call themselves progressives, who will vote for him. 
Uh, Mark Farrell has, I would say, about 25 to 30 percent as well of people who have seen him and know him. Uh, the mayor, London Breed, a lot of people discount her, but I wouldn't. I think she's going to run a very strong campaign. And remember, we have rank choice voting, which means you can vote for three people. And in the end, as elimination takes place, uh, the numbers can shift rapidly. So I'm opposed to rank choice voting. I think what you do is you have the two top people run off against each other. That's the way it used to be. That's the way it ought to be. Uh, and uh, at least that was the way it was uh, after 1979. So my, my sense, to be very honest with you, is that uh, uh, we've got a problem in terms of San Francisco. But San Francisco shares the same problem with major cities across America. It doesn't matter where you are. Homelessness, fentanyl, uh, the issues of uh, urban tragedy, which takes place, the uh, number of people who are now working from home and therefore don't need offices. I mean, you can go down the list of issues. Uh, there is a major argument here in San Francisco over the police chief. And you should ask Mark the question and you should ask London Breed the question and Daniel Lurie, who is also running. They need to be put on the spot and ask these tough questions. The... Uh, you, you, when you point to other cities, the city right across the bay, Oakland, huge issues. Uh, and I mention Oakland because when we talk about San Francisco not being what it was, and I'm seeing it in the chat. By the way, know, Mark, I want to correct myself. I made a mistake, and I want to correct myself. The runoff system in San Francisco began in 1975. The top two ran off against each other. Not 79, I was mis misspoke. But I can tell you now there is no runoff system. The same thing applies, I would point out to you, uh, on a variety of levels in, in statewide elections as well. There needs to be a real point counterpoint. Uh, and uh, so I'm in favor of, of returning to the system of runoff. Go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, I was, I'm glad you corrected that. I mean, it's so odd to have John make an error because he's made maybe a handful of errors in his life. He's remarkable. Would you mind calling my wife and telling her that? You're so exacting in the information that you well, offer. That's why when I make a mistake and the yes. audience should know, I try to correct myself. Yes, yes. Well, uh, so John, uh, here's a question for you. Any comments on my on mayoral candidate, uh, Asha Safai? Yes. Um, Safai yeah. is running, a member of the Board of Supervisors, uh, also runs to the left. And I think the problem Safai will have is, and I say this respectfully, uh, is that if uh, Aaron Peskin does jump in, I think the vote on the left will solidify behind him. By the way, in terms of Daniel Lurie, uh, who is running hard, uh, and Mark Farrell, maybe they split the same vote. Uh, I mean, it's an interesting thing. The Democratic Party in the city is certainly going to support London Breed. So is Willie Brown, who, by the way, just observed his 90th birthday. Willie, many happy returns. Uh, it's going to be a real battle for the future of San Francisco. But the question ultimately will be, what kind of leadership will the next mayor offer? How effective can a mayor be given the kind of system we have in the city? Look, they have bigger challenges across the Bay, but it would seem to me that Oakland wow. is a city that has some of the same issues. And many in San Francisco may look across the Bay at Oakland and go, you know, that's where we're headed unless we get our act together. I mean, with a... Yeah, but you uh, will note that Oakland is talking about changing the name of its international airport. Right. Well, they want to add gonna... San Francisco to it. So that's you know, not going to about... change the, that's not going to change what happens on the ground. I mean, the, everything you, about San you can change all the names you want. Yeah. You still well, have to solve problems. You heard the big news today. The Republicans in the House of Representatives want to change the name of Dulles Airport to Trump Airport. Yeah. Can you imagine the lunacy of it? Yeah, no, it's it's pretty crazy. It's it's a we were talking about it yesterday. Another effort on the part of a handful of Republicans in Congress to go. No, I love Trump more than you do. No, 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 no. I love Trump even more than you do. But this Oakland versus San Francisco, it's not so much the competition, but the public safety issues in both cities. I think are instructive. I mean, the, this is a real problem, and it is affecting business. And even. As you said, the renaming of the airport is in response on some level to a stink that Oakland is getting on it. And it's sad because it really, it is or was a great city. But, you know, slowly you lose the ballpark. You lose the vibrance of the downtown. Uh, it's it, And you lose it to a lawlessness, I think, on the part of the public. Right, that, that's listen, the feeling. The same thing applies in San Francisco. There are a lot of people who will not go downtown shopping 
Macy's is moving out of San Francisco. It's a terrible blow. Uh, and so these are all issues that urban centers across America are doing. But remember, Macy's isn't just leaving San Francisco. It's leaving locations all across the country. They've decided to go high end. Macy's was not supposed to be high end. Macy's was supposed to be a place where anybody could go for affordable shopping. Uh, and may I tell you, this is something that uh, we are going to be wrestling with in San Francisco uh, and in urban centers across the nation uh, as people rely more and more on uh, shopping online. It, it's uh, My wife bought me some shoes. She bought them online. Uh, I, I thought to myself, what? I want to try them on. I John is feel. like, John's like 10 years behind. I, you can buy May shoes I say, online. No, no, I'm not 10 <laughs> years behind. I'm a half a what? century behind. <laughs> you heard of Zappos, right? Zappos, yeah. uh, they wrote a whole book that uh, there's Macy's on Union Square. What a gorgeous place. And, and look place next Union door to Square it, the too. white marble, that yeah. was iMagnons. Right. And That's so what, you, right? you're going to have, you're going to have Macy's, iMagnon. Other major stores in San Francisco closing, why go downtown? You know, that's yeah. going to be a real question. Of course, there are some who have come up with ideas. One suggestion was uh, to uh, uh, turn it into a, a university setting. Uh, that may happen as well. But the, the real reality well, wait, wait, is the, the, uh, to, call, to, to turn the old I Magnet into university, along with Macy's, into an, a university yeah, setting? Yeah, and Bloomingdale's and, and to the malls. Yeah. Right there on Union Square? Perhaps. Well, John, that seems, I guess if you're losing retail business, you're desperate for something, but that would completely change the character of Union Square, wouldn't it? Well, these stores closing is changing the character of Union sure. Square. Sure. Mayor Breed suggested south of market with the closing of the big malls there, they turn it into a big soccer field. And I, I, my response was, I'm sure we'll all get a big kick out of it. Oh, my God. I. Uh... What? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I was waiting for the what. Um <laughs> Well, John, uh, uh, as uh, at this juncture, wait, wait, you haven't hit the most important issue today. Bill. What is that, sir? That is that Speaker Johnson's in big trouble because he's going to push. It appears a bill to bribe money for Ukraine, right? And the right wing of his party are opposed to that, and he could lose his job. Well, wait and a the minute, but there's wait, 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 wait one second. Oh, great guru, there is one massive difference in this particular iteration of the removing the speaker game that the GOP is playing. They played it with McCarthy. The big difference here is with the Democrats. The Democrats may actually support Johnson and help him retain his seat. Don't you think? Which would, which would destroy him politically. Of course, but it would. It, it, it's, a, it's a great counter move. Yeah. Okay, let me ask you a question. Who's the next speaker of the House of Representatives going to be? Uh, I mean, again. I'm going to make a prediction to you. Hakeem Jeffries. Wow. The well, that would be. Leader, if not now, after oh, the election. Yeah, after the election, absolutely, of course. Well, the, the, the Dems are going to take uh, the House back, and then it will be Hakeem Jeffries. So, yeah, no, I think that's a, that's a safe. And who uh, will be the power behind the throne? Nancy Pelosi. No. Wow. She's not part of the leadership. What? Hakeem mm. Jeffries relies on her. Democrats across the country, she's still the biggest single fundraiser for the Democratic Party. So, John, your wife is away. Do you change your activities, the rhythm of your life at all, with your wife out of the house? No, not really. Uh, you know, uh, yes, of course I do. <laughs> Everything is different. Uh, and, and may I tell you, she is having a splendid time, but I will this afternoon speak. Uh, I wouldn't be doing a speech this afternoon were it not for the fact that my wife is out of town. We would have been celebrating. And then we're going out with relatives of hers who are from Israel. The uh, most interesting thing, Michael Gross is a professor of political science at Haifa University. So I will have a chance to get an in-depth sense from uh, Dr. Gross of, of what he sees as the future in terms of that conflict, which as everyone knows, becomes more and more distressing with each passing day. It is a dark time in the whole region. So, Oh, wait, uh, you know, you didn't ask me about is the Israeli hitting the uh, Iranian uh, embassy no, in Syria, in Syria. Yeah, yes. that, that and, will provoke and, a response from Iran, John. Well, we'll see, because if it does, there's a constant escalation. And please, everybody, keep your eye on southern Lebanon. Hezbollah controls it. They are part of the uh, of the Iranian push. 
will they now escalate their activity? Remember, most people don't realize it, but about 250,000 Israelis have had to evacuate northern Israel because of constant rocket attacks. You know, this is a growing issue, a growing problem. And uh, one of the things we may want to talk about one day is how do you stabilize the Middle East? By the way, if we can come up with an answer, it would be almost as good yeah, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a Mark day. Thompson listeners buying a lottery ticket and <laughs> promising to give you the proceeds. That would yeah. take care of the whole problem. Yeah, you'll need fact, way more than a day. buy a radio station. <laughs> John, we love you. Around the political world with John Rothman is the podcast. It's offered as a daily thing, and it's a uh, it's a treat. It's short. It's, I think, only 10 minutes long. So, 10 um, minutes long, and give Mark Farrell my best. He's going to be a great guest for you. Great. Well, that, that happens later in the month. Uh, the great John Rothman, everybody. <laughs> Bye, John. The Mark Thompson Show. Wow. Yeah. Rothman laying down the knowledge, you know. Um. We're in the middle of a, a good one, everybody. This is, as you know, uh, March, which, uh, well, it's April, but we started this in March. And when, it, for the last few years, we have done this every March. It's uh, no. only my favorite thing on earth. Mark's Madness. It's Mark's Madness. We do the brackets the same way March Madness works. And you've given us this final. And it's a pretty tough one. It's two fan favorites. Either you vote for that or... There's always been in this country 30 to 35 percent idiots. So you vote for either or you vote for... There's always been in this country 30 to 35 percent idiots. Vote live until the end of the show then in the community section of YouTube. Good luck. Albert, what is happening? It continues to be close. It's uh, one of them is kind of slightly pulling away, but it's a 57 to 43, a 56 to 44. It's that's fluctuating. Well, let but... me just say this, and I don't know what the uh, right now the percentages are or the vote is, but as I've maybe made the point in a glancing way before, let me make it in an excruciatingly clear way that one of the problems with 30 percent winning, the difficulty for 30 percent is that all the people in Mark's Madness who pick Chit 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 to win are all going to vote for Chit Chit Chit. So you, since you people who voted for 30% are so small in number, you guys voting for 30%, that doesn't help you, bottom line. All of those people, I mean, I don't know, there are 80 of them, I think, who, who went for Chit Chit Chit. You've got 80 votes all of those people automatically for, uh, for that. So uh, there's always been in this country 30 to 35 percent idiots. But I love that we're ch -ch 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 putting up against each other. Those two favorites. I love it. It's, it's just new blood into the fight. Like there's they're they're new favorites now. So it, it feels fresh. It feels new. And the producer, no idea, didn't make it. So I'm mm. glad all those three happened. Yeah. Uh, when we come back after Kim's news. Can I just give you a little that's rich? We haven't done a that's rich in a while. Kim, how should I do this? We should do your news first and then um, and then that's rich. No, uh, Albert, some, what? Let's do yeah. some that's rich because I feel like I just ended the news. Yeah, you did just do a big mm -hmm. chunk. So uh, maybe we'll... How do you feel about that, Kamish? Is that, Kim, how are you? What? That sounds good. And then we could uh, we could always go to news a little earlier too. Uh, yeah, yeah the good. Okay. Albert, I'll, thank you. All right. So as you vote, we will do this. We like to keep an eye on the moneyed in the world. We call it That's Rich. Who are they? The top one-tenth of one percent. What are they like? These people are so posh and snobby, they're snobby. That's Rich on The Mark Thompson Show. And we start with Jeff Bezos. Yep, he is a, he's a wealthy guy. And he is splurging on a third mansion in oh. Indian Creek, Florida. Yeah, that's where the elite meet to spend money. This is his uh, billionaire bunker. And when two the, mansions just won't do, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, when you've got it, spend it. Uh, Bezos is agreeing to pay $90 million for this particular property. What? Yeah. It's an off-market transaction, so it never made it to the open market. He plans to live in the house while tearing down the neighboring mansions that he bought last year. Oh. He spent $150 million for those, as you may recall. 
This is an ultra-exclusive island. Uh, Tom Brady lives there, the NFL uh, quarterback. It's called Billionaire Bunker. And Bezos, there's a shot of uh, the mansion that he just bought for $90 million and the uh, associated grounds. You can see there's a little uh, golf course there. There's Lauren on the left and Bezos on the right. Tom Brady, Jeffrey Silver, and Jeff Bezos. There they are, neighboring uh, mansions all it right does there. It look like the Bezos house is smaller than the others. Mm. So it could be that he felt he needed to up his game. I see. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a really good point, if that's mm -hmm. true. My gosh. Uh, it's six bedrooms, and uh, he is, of course, the third richest billionaire, as rated by Forbes. That comes and goes, you know, that there's an uh, almost like an ebbing and flowing of those billions. But as Albert shows you these pictures, um, you should know that um, he picked up the two mansions uh, on this island last year, one for $68 million, the other for $79 million. So this $90 million, you know, if you'd run the comps, it's about right. And it's on the opposite side of the island from the two neighboring homes that he purchased. So it's unclear how he's going to tie these all together. But uh, he does plan to live in this house, I guess, uh, while they're tearing down the pair of other mansions. Maybe then he'll sell this house after all that is done. You can see the entire layout there we posted for you uh, with the other wealthy people. Ivanka Trump and Jared Kushner uh, live there. Julio Iglesias, you can see where all these people live. We have it posted up on our YouTube channel. Jeff Bezos there with Lauren, Carl Icahn, Tom Brady. So these are, you know, they're the, the well-heeled are there in Florida. And this Indian Creek Island overlooks Biscayne Bay. It's known as Billionaire Bunker, and it has picked up uh, many billionaires or, you know, close to billionaires along the way. It's and it's nice. only accessible by a single guarded bridge and protected by a private police force that patrols the community around the clock by foot, sky, and land. No so, riffraff in there. No. Yeah. It's, mm -mm. Uh, no trolls it's, under that bridge, Mark. No. <laughs> <laughs> the median house price. The median house price of a place on this island, what do you think it is? And it's called Billionaire Bunker, right? Yes, Billionaire Bunker. It's Indian Creek Island. It's been branded the most exclusive municipality in the world. What do you think the median price is for a place there on Indian Creek? 65 million? She guesses 65 million, does Kim. That is not correct. No. Anybody else? You want to put some of 50 million, says Nancy. 89 million, says Phineas. 70 million, says Dillette. 11,780, says Trevor Starr in Hollywood, who, by the way, is moving back to Concord, I learned. Um, Calvin Wong, the shadow producer of this show, 45 million. No, that's not correct. 21 million, says Spencer Jaffe. That is not correct. Are gators included, is the question from Calvin. Again, this exclusive municipality. 73 million, says Janie. Miami South Beach is eight miles from here. William Lundgren at 33 million. I will... 17 million, says Heidi. William is closest. The answer, $29.5 million. Wow. Yes, That's yeah. cheap for a billionaire. That's really? the median price. I know. You can get in for a lot less than you thought. Well, good job, William. You came close. I would have guessed higher also. Pretty incredible. Anyway, congratulations to Lauren Sanchez and Jeff Bezos on your new acquisition. Now to Puerto Rico. The most expensive home ever hits the market in Puerto Rico. Again, this is the most expensive listing in the history of Puerto Rico. The pricey estate comes with more than 6,000 square feet, a sauna, and an infinity pool. It's a penthouse in Puerto Rico, and the residence has four bedrooms, 
four bathrooms and panoramic ocean views. It's pretty. Yeah, it is pretty damn nice. And you got that fi- that planter with the face on it too. Like they have there. <laughs> My gosh. <laughs> what? Wow. That is true. That's a planter is uh I think they throw That's it in nice for you. The nice jawline to it. <laughs> Very artsy. Um I'll tell you a story about a, a um about a, a, a similar uh, acquisition that I made uh, after this uh, segment is done. With its stunning combination of elegance and sophistication is what the listing says. Uh, it's delicate and distinctive modern design, serene color schemes, and premium stones. This trophy property offers an experience that is akin to having your very own tropical haven. Oof. The Sky Home, as it's called, takes up two floors, and it's for people who want the maximum privacy and comfort. Yeah, you know what? I want maximum privacy. The comfort doesn't really bother me as much. No, I want a lot of comfort, not as much privacy. You get both of them in this case. These are penthouses that are branded uh, with Rich Carlton. So they have luxurious bedrooms, uh, these well-appointed bathrooms, and direct access to the beach. And again, the retail price, $49 million, everyone. Mm-hmm. There it is. It is the most expensive home ever sold in Puerto Rico, and it's pretty spectacular. We have pictures of it. Albert's putting them all up now. Wow. And this is a beautiful, wide open feels very Florida, very gorgeous. And the wolf and sub zero appliances in the kitchen, a chef's kitchen. It's uh, kind of a given, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. they've got the yeah. it's it's top of the line. Everything's yeah. top of the line. Wow, look at oh, all of look that. Look at that. What is that? Mm-hmm. Oh, Some that's kind of terrible studio? cord management. That's how you start a fire. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a um, it really is kind of a violation of everything uh, that you would be. We have processes and protocols and standards. Yeah, they are not being respected there in the uh, most expensive piece of real estate in Puerto Rico. So, um. It's a U.S. protectorate. I think, Beth, it's well, it's a commonwealth is what um, Puerto Rico is, I believe, if you check it. I mean, I don't know. Uh, check it. Our I mean, unofficial, Google it. Official yeah. 51st yeah. state, yeah. <laughs> it is not. Uh, yeah, right. They have, as a commonwealth, they have no voting rights particularly, but they do have to pay taxes and, you know. Um, that, my friends, two gorgeous beachside properties concludes That's Rich for today. More on how the other half lives. These people aren't just rich. They're crazy rich. Next time on the Mark Thompson Show. Yeah, uh, John asks, I think, perhaps the most pertinent question on these, even on Indian Creek. That's the place where Tom Brady, the Bezos, and everybody lives. How much is hurricane insurance, says John? Exactly. I mean, the world is changing, kid. And I'm just saying straight up, I don't care how much you paid for the place. Uh, Mother Nature doesn't care how much you pay for the place. The waters are rising. Uh, This in the Super Chat from Edward Lee, regular in the Super Chat. Big shout out to Edward. Big shout out. We need an MTS lottery pool. Albert, thank you. (laughs) I guess Albert Albert, is uh, being... uh, Putting that together? Yeah, yeah, suggested as the guy who... Would put it together. I, I might just disappear if if, if anything yeah. happens. If, uh, yeah, he, Albert is pretty trustworthy. I don't think he would uh, hit the road with it, but I also don't know that he'd get it done in time. Like there'd be a question about him actually executing the mission properly. But I don't think he'd steal. I don't think that he has that move. No. Um, tell us your second home estate store. Oh, it's uh... <laughs> no. I um. I was going to say when I moved to uh, Los Angeles, I lived uh, across the street, you know, on that uh, street across the street from Johnny Depp, right? That's the way the street is famous. That's the way I can just mm-hmm. mention it and drop the name. But I moved in before Johnny Depp. Uh, not that it's important, but just, that's the Johnny Depp part of the story. But And you've heard me tell that story before. But the um, stairway, you'd walk in and there was, there's a huge stairway up. So you have two uh, bedrooms downstairs and then the primary bedroom and the kitchen and the living room, et cetera, dining room upstairs. So up these long, this long staircase, uh, you, you walk, and it's kind of pretty dramatic as you, uh, you walk in. So at the, I got this designer guy who got a table that was a head 
I think it's like the head of David or maybe Michelangelo, whatever. It's just a head. And on top of the head is a gl circular glass piece. That's the table part. So we just called it the head table. Okay. <laughs> okay. And it was really dramatic, as I say, at the top of the stairs. Well, it, it was sort of like one of those things people would give me a hard time about. And my pal Bean, who was a big radio guy. He used to always uh, go, Mark, really? The head table? I mean, are you taking it with you when you move to your new house? And we did take the head table to every single house, including the house we moved into. So it's been now with us for decades. And uh, but it has moved outdoors now. It's not inside anymore. So it is outside. And honestly, it looks a lot like that head planter to which Albert referred. And that's what made me think of it. So the head table, I'll post a picture of it on our YouTube channel so you'll get a sense of it. S. Jones swinging by to say hello. Let's go Mark's Madness. Yeah. What is the situation with Mark's Madness? This is the finals. Now, I can't believe it. Mark's Madness. I can't believe what's going down. It's either Ch -ch 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 or there's always been in this country 30 to 35 percent idiots yes only one can win mark's madness all of the madness comes Ch down Ch to chit 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 or there's always been in this country 30 to 35 percent idiots i know it's like choosing between children but you gotta vote and you gotta do it now if you're live in the chat otherwise you do it in the community section of our youtube channel after the show until midnight tonight. It looks like somebody is gaining. And I don't know who it is. I literally haven't looked. Mm. But if I had to guess, I re it really is hard. I'm going to guess that Chit 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 is winning. I think mm. Chit Chit Chit's winning. I think you're wrong. I'm not just trying to be obstinate. No, are you? Are you? <laughs> I blame I you. <laughs> what? Uh, I think I blame you is in for next year. I blame you. <laughs> um, uh, have you looked, Kim, or not? Uh, yeah, I have looked. Oh, I, you've looked. Okay, I, I'm going down. In the comment sections, uh, I think I see Phineas here, like he is updating it, and just like 58 percent idiots now. And blah, 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 wow, 58 percent yeah. idiots. There's yeah. always been in this country 30 to 35 percent wow. idiots. Well, that would be titanic Ch -ch 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 if chit 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 drops to idiots. I mean, idiots is the Cinderella, Cinderella entry, and it would be extraordinary if it was to win. But um, I love both Kim and Jim. Now what? Says Angel in the Bay Area. Big shout Big out. Shout Thank out. you for the 10 spot on the Super Chat. And Angel in the Bay Area is, uh, yeah. I think, doing something that a lot of us do. Angel in the Bay Area is personalizing the drops. And as I I've encouraged you, you yeah. not to do it, it's still hard not to do it. But again, it's not that you're voting against Kim or for right. Jim or against Jim. Yeah. You're just just a drop. She's not going away. Chit chit chit. Are you kidding? Ch -ch -ch we'll be using it like crazy. It doesn't. Not, it'll never go away. And thirty. There's always been uh, in this country thirty to thirty five percent idiots. The thing about thirty to thirty five percent idiots, Albert, is that we just almost never use that drop. <laughs> it's true. We don't use it as much. We don't use it, and we kind of have, have like a general rule about drops that it should be only a few seconds, if not right. more than one second, and that's a longer drop, and we try not to do it because it really interrupts everything. So Sure. So we like we – like, like this would be uh and this is their new hoax that's a perfect that's a perfect perfect drop. perfectly uh, yeah. good day sir is perfect good right. day sir um the science is ridiculous is pretty the science is ridiculous that's right on the edge of being a little too long you know but casey's probably the same but i mean so have there, you ever been a member of the chinese communist party i love that one but that one dropped early i mean to me that's just so absurd but i loved it um the don't talk to me that way. I've always don't talk to me that way. I don't know. These are good drops, but um, come on, peeps, don't let the idiots win. <laughs> <laughs> Go chit chit chit, says Luis. Big shout out, Luis. Big Thank shout you. out. I don't know, but I also get the charm and the magic of the thirty percent. There's always been in this country thirty to thirty five percent idiots. Uh, and people are saying, like Ren, well, Mark, we really need the thirty to thirty five percent drop used more and more this year. <laughs> Ch 
I mean, um, if, if, if he if it wins, I think we we might have to. We may have to use it. This is what you know, the, people, Jim, the people have spoken. Literally, will Jim Avila appear on the show if his drop wins? Good question. I can ask him. Mm. I did send him uh, a little bit of yesterday's show to um, just give him a sense of the fact that he was in it. You know, in it in a big way. So, um, anyway, this is pretty uh, pretty exciting. I am um, uh, now. Yeah, I can finally sleep. Thanks for clarifying. Says Angel <laughs> in the Bay Area. Big shout out. Big again. shout out. Really appreciate the um, the super chat and super sticker. By the way, let me just mention this since I mentioned super sticker and super sticker. And thank you, Angel in the Bay Area. All of you who are so active in the chat, uh, you can, and thank you those of you who've uh, left us uh, contributions after the fact. You can make contributions to the show uh, on PayPal and on Patreon. In fact, I got a really cool email. Let me just see if I can find it. I've that. received a lot of positive letters. Well, this is a... Um, I should have planned this out. Um, the... You can reach us at the Mark Thompson Show at gmail.com if you do have any comments on the show or any questions or any suggestions if you want to do my job for me. Like Calvin Wong since it seems to, to pretty much do all my job without getting paid. So, <laughs> so. I'm going to Shout forward this on to, if I haven't already, Albert, from uh, Shelly. Uh, it's the eclipse uh, picture that she took during the last eclipse. And I got a couple of... Uh, pretty good communications on the eclipse i'll share those for um the audience maybe tomorrow and i also wanted to mention uh some of you have sent uh ideas for true crime corner i'll forward those on and you'll uh here it is um Oh, no, it's not. Sorry. Uh, Uh-oh. I didn't really plan this very well. We can always um, do some news well, we, and you can uh, do it after. Yeah, let me do some news and then, I'll, and then yeah. I'll grab this. It's a, um, there's some good, we've gotten a couple of good emails and I wanted to share them. Uh, Louis says, I think Kim rigged this for Jim. Her oh, love for him is unending. I do have love LOL. for him. Yeah. Time to get the cyber ninjas and the my pillow guy on the case. <laughs> <laughs> it's rigged. It's Big rigged. Big shout out. Yeah. Um, Stop anyway, the steal. stop the steal. That's right. Stop the counting right now. Um, yes, the Mark Thompson show at gmail.com is our address. Very cool. And um, we can vote until midnight tonight on uh, Mark's Madness. Okay, I'll, I'll continue my search. I also have some special acknowledgments on PayPal um, that I wanted to get to. So I'll do both of those things when we continue. Smash the like button Smash if you would. It, it helps us. In the world of YouTube, how many likes you have, all that stuff matters. And I appreciate all the ways you interact with the show. That matters too. Mark Thompson Show. The Mark Thompson Show. On the Mark Thompson Show, I'm Kim McAllister. A Wall Street Journal poll shows former President Trump ahead of President Biden in six of seven so-called battleground states. A poll has Trump ahead by anywhere between two and eight percentage points in the six battleground states where he leads. Wisconsin, the only battleground state in which President Biden leads. So it's, you know, I, what do they say? Don't put your stock in polls. You never know who's answering these questions. But still, that's not what you want to hear unless you're a Trump supporter. An evacuation warning is up for residents in the Big Sur area ahead of the rain forecast for Thursday. So they had been leading these convoys, one at 8 a.m., one at the, in the 4.30 or 4 ish four o'clock hour in the afternoon. And they're tr they were leading the convoys so people could get the supplies they needed, medical things, what have you, get in and out. Well, there's rain coming. And so the warning is to people in the Big Sur area, the convoys are going to stop during the rains because that road may not be stable. So get the supplies you need now, today, because tomorrow the convoys come to a close temporarily uh, and the road will close for the storm. So just be aware of that if you're in the area. 
A Southwest Airlines flight has been forced to make an emergency landing. It was headed from New Orleans to Orlando. When it reached Florida, it was hit with turbulence. The pilot put the plane down in Tampa Bay. A spokesperson for the Texas-based carrier says two people were taken to the hospital. One was a passenger, the other a flight attendant. The uh, extent of their injuries at this point is unclear, but that must have been a heck of some turbulence. The city of Los Angeles is hiring private security to protect the infamous graffiti towers in the downtown area from further vandalism. Yesterday, the L.A. City Council voted unanimously in favor of changing the way the city enforces building standards. One of those changes, hiring private security to monitor buildings the city has determined have become a danger to life, limb, health, or safety. The update paving the way for private security monitoring of the ocean-wide plaza, where about 30 floors are covered in graffiti and other abandoned properties that have been hit by vandals as well. I mean, it's crazy that they have to have private security uh, augmented by city security cops essentially stationed there it's a the whole thing is a mess and this is the downside to unabated development you know this is these are developers who ran out of money essentially and so this uh, i get it is artistic and it's different and it's Mm -hmm. urban graffiti and it's but what it's also a fire danger crime ridden and has become just a nest for a lot of bad stuff Well, here's the kicker to this. The owners of the properties have to reimburse the city for the cost of the private security. Yeah, out of what? I mean, that's the point. I mean, you may have to take them to court to get that money. They may not have it. Mm -mm. I mean, if they had it, wouldn't they be doing something more with the building? Thank you. They would be finishing the building if they had the money. The FBI is announcing a $25,000 reward for information leading to the arrest of the people seen damaging a Southern California Edison electrical substation happened in Torrance, California. The incident happened last August. It was caught on surveillance video. Investigators say a person or a group of people shot a transformer and turned off several circuit breakers. Nobody was hurt, but there was significant property damage there. People who live in the Fairfax neighborhood in Southern California, not Northern California, are frustrated about a property called the Trash House. Have you seen this place? Wow. Yeah, the home is- this is this is insane. Do, do we have, can we rally a picture of it? Do you have a picture of it, Albert? I, the uh, Trash I'll House. I'll handle it. Don't worry about it. Okay. Yeah, yeah the it, Trash it, this House. This is a, you must see it. It's it's an extraordinary thing. It's wild. It's surrounded by bags of garbage empty bottles of cleaning supplies, clothing, other junk. I mean, you got to wonder when you see it, how in the world did they let this get like this? How do you let trash pile up in such a way? How do you live there and exist and, you know, have a happy life? I don't think you do. The Los Angeles Building and Safety Department cited the property owner 10 years ago before the city cleaned it up and stuck the homeowner with the bill. But that trash quickly returned. Property records show the same person has owned the home for close to three decades. Look at that. I mean, it's hard to see the magnitude of all that garbage. And imagine having to walk by or drive by that house every day, the smell, all the debris there. I'm glad you mentioned the smell. It's not just a visually unsightly thing. I mean, it's just, it is a blight on the neighborhood. It's outrageous. And the city, I would imagine you can health. cite the homeowner, but you yeah. now may have to take more aggressive measures. It's absolutely outrageous. This whole, uh, there's this thing where we just don't, we just think we're the only ones. You know what I mean? It, it doesn't affect anybody else. I mean, your world affects other people. Crazy. It really is. And you wonder, after the city did it the first time, came in, charged the homeowner, why they wouldn't have then, with a clean property, taken steps, right? I don't know if it's a hoarding situation or what, but awful. I can't imagine living next to that. You're right. It's just absolutely, it's inexcusable. It's a sad situation at the Mount Wilson Observatory. They are canceling their in-person viewing event for Monday's solar eclipse weather. Organizers are blaming new snow on the ground and another storm in the forecast, which could make travel to and from that observatory dangerous. The observatory was going to live stream the eclipse in its auditorium in Hydrogen Alpha. It's a filter that shows the surface features of the sun. Monday's eclipse starting at 10.06 a.m. Pacific time. Here's something that would make me want to hop on a plane and go to the UK. 
iconic locations for Britain's royal family will be open to the public for the first time ever. What? This summer. The East Wing of Buckingham Palace and Balmoral Castle in Scotland will both offer tours starting in July. The tour of the palace's East Wing will include a stop in the room where the royals gather before they step out onto the palace's balcony to wave to the public. The East Wing is being open to the public following more than five years of renovations. Meanwhile, the public will be able to go inside Balmoral Castle for the first time since being completed in 1855. That's this not castle... fake. That's real. <laughs> I want to go to Balmoral. The yeah. castle is a favorite summer retreat spot for the royal family. It's also where Queen Elizabeth II died in 2022. So, I mean, you haven't had the members of the public in this place. Ever. How much do you think that they're going to charge that for oh. that, though, Kim? How much to tour Balmoral? Mm. Yeah. How much would you pay? I'd pay what? Ricky Obear said 20 quid per. So. I think maybe 40, 40 quid per is what I would say. Probably, yeah. How much is a quid? A quid? Uh, it's, it's a pound. British oh, a pound? pound is a quid, yeah. How much is a, a dollar per pound? I mean, I pay about 100 bucks to go inside, maybe? Yeah. I don't know. I, I mean, the, I mean, I don't know. Google 50, it. Yeah. Pound is 50. <laughs> and then I'll Google it. I think that's pretty cool. That's going to be really I went to Balmoral popular. Castle, says Beth, a few years ago, got as far as the gift shop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, maybe that's as far as you need to get, you know. Beth, we need to go inside. Let's go. Yeah. This report is sponsored by you, which means we do rely on you to fund our excursions to Balmoral. Please find us at <laughs> themarkthompsonshow.com. It's themarkthompsonshow.com, and it really does help us keep the show rolling here. Uh, you can find the Patreon link. You can find the PayPal link. Not only there, but also in the show description. But again, the website, themarkthompsonshow.com. I'm Kim McAllister. This is The Mark Thompson Show. <laughs> They had to close down an entire radio station to silence him. And now, he's here. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Thompson. Smash it with your iron rod. I come from regular stock. There's a reason that this place is fun. Morning. Don't ever use that word. What are the porn stars doing, Mark? What? They pay me a lot of money for having attitude. What you say is the political dogma that they're trying to shove down our throats. Straight up right in, no problem. He's fantastic. What the hell is going on in the United States of America? And this is their new hot roll, Hanyos Mars. Girl, you just really... I don't wear a mask for the same reason I don't wear underwear. Things gotta breathe. That was very inappropriate. Say what? Do you have a secret talent? You get nothing! Y'all can all go to hell and I'm going back to Texas. Big shout out. Out of time. Bye bye. Did you really just do that? We are in the middle of a spirited conversation about many things. We're also in the middle of a uh, spirited Marx Madness celebration. It is pretty wild, I have to say. This has been a Marx Madness that has been typified. Typified would be a, a ding word, yeah. Uh, typified by upsets, right, Kamish? I mean, let's it, just be honest. It's truly madness this year. I think the uh, madness has been accentuated here, especially with all the unpredictable. Yes. Drops winning and, and all these uh, low seeds. Accentuated and, is a ding word also. Very well done, Albert. I, I mean, got he's one, not, Mark, I got one. That's like not my second known one of the for year. your dings, but you yeah. do get one in once in a while. Now, I can't believe it. Mark's Madness. I'm going to miss it when it's gone, Albert. I love my Mark's Madness. 
And what a good one we've got going. You vote for either. There's always been in this country 30 to 35 percent idiots. Or you vote for. All right. Either. There's always been in this country 30 to 35 percent idiots. It's idiots or chit, chit, chit. Do it for your country. Do it for your God. Do it for yourself. And good luck. Oh, my God. Albert, I whips me into a frenzy when I think about the madness that is Mark's madness. If Chit 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 doesn't win, America is finished and we are all doomed. It says so in the new Trump Bible. Wow. <laughs> well said, Lu- was that Luis? Yeah, that was yeah. Luis. Yeah. Oh my God. Luis. And we have this one from Debbie. We have we have so many short drops by Trump because he can't communicate longer sentences. Oh, I see. Well, I mean Don't talk to me that way. <laughs> That's uh yeah. Take your last shots. Take your last shots at your fearless leader. Uh all right. So uh I have Belinda waiting. I promised a quick update. Can I just update real quick something so special? The people who support this show, I really just want to acknowledge them. The Mark Thompson Show. And you support in a lot of ways. I'll tell you, you, you know, yeah, of course it's money. And money is really important because we've got to pay people. We have staff. We like to, yeah. everybody's paid and they're paid well. Okay, so um, Albert is paid and Tony's paid and Kim's paid and I'm paid. And the reality is that unless we have the money coming in, uh, we can't continue. But there are other ways that you support. You share the show across your social network. You may share a short, or you may share a video, or you may share the show link for the live show, for the whole show, the two-hour show. These things matter because they help increase the footprint of the show. So I'm really grateful for people who do that. But on the money side, I really want to just to acknowledge some extraordinary uh, support on PayPal. And on PayPal, uh, Geraldine gave us a hundred dollars which is really just a terrific geraldine a big shout out to you and uh big shout out my appreciation and the appreciation of everybody on board here uh also cynthia big shout out big for 100 shout out. on paypal and Lori, also with 100 big on paypal out. i mean really impressive and 25 from big Carol, shout out. 30 from Lorene. big shout out calvin the shadow producer with a 50. big shout out. So these things really matter. And those of you who have stepped up in that way, thank you so much. And or as I like to say, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is that and more acknowledgments. And, you know, we post everybody's name on the on the screen at the end of the show. And that'll be updated. Tony is in Hawaii right now. So when he gets back. <laughs> Thanks, Tony. <laughs> I'll have him update the uh, the list. I got a couple of uh, comments, and I don't want to uh, delay too long before I get to Belinda. But um, we get one guy who's got the whole drill down on the background and the kinds of earpieces, and so these are all people who are trying to help with the with offering the opinion as to what we should have exactly um there i haven't heard about your parents lately mark from naked desire can we speak to them soon yeah i hope so i'm actually going back to see my parents at the end of the month um because we just moved them into uh or help move them into a an assisted living situation which is by the way like the coolest setup i would love to live where they're living it it is a it's like a cool um it's like a cool apartment house sort of with a lot of facilities and they've got a movie theater there and they've got a that's you cool know, yeah it's pretty cool um the um when we we're doing mark's madness somebody wrote yesterday i like this one michael wrote does this podcast cover politics or do they just spend time on audio games <laughs> <laughs> what how dare you sir do you know who i am really i'm kind of a big deal so uh anyway though a few com- i love your comments after hours those comments are after hours and also in the live chat and when you comment it also helps the youtube algorithm looks at the dynamics of people commenting and that sort of thing so there so more is more people can um, get the audio um games you know they'll be notified of our games yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes that's right don't forget to hit the bell on youtube so you will be notified whenever we are um on or coming on 
Uh, Jim Slayton with a super sticker. Thank you, Jim, and big shout big out shout to you. Out. Wednesdays bring uh, Belinda Weymouth into our mix. We do a segment regularly every week about the environment, about the planet, about things going on, and how dare you, Ricky, write this. So Belinda is waiting. So another classic Mark Thompson time waster. How dare you? I was just... This well, is you a need classic to... Mark Thompson time waster. I think that it, it's just, you know... When we everybody jumps on somehow, board, you it's know, a tough we spot. Gotta, we got to shout out the people who pay our bills. So, Got to shout out the supporters. Thank you. Plus, in our new expanded format, we can go over the top of the hour, which is uh, pretty great. So I will not, what? it does not impinge upon Belinda's time. This is It's the Planet Stupid. The Planet Earth. Some call me nature. I am very passionate about the planet. Earth. A living, breathing planet capable of sustaining whatever life forms we see fit to deposit on it. Spock, judging by the pollution content of the atmosphere, I believe we have arrived. It's the planet stupid. No, no, no. It's the planet stupid. Our guide for It's the Planet Stupid, Belinda Weymouth, environmental journalist, just returning from a spectacular trip into the environment yourself. You yep. were in the Grand Canyon? Yes, we went to the Grand Canyon. We went to Sedona. I've been hiking, you know, around buttes. I've been going down into the Grand Canyon, looking at the, the muddy waters of the Colorado River um, and just, yeah, really communing with nature. We had elk everywhere when we were in the Grand Canyon. It was just absolutely fantastic. I was telling um, people, and we got your video and ran uh, some of the videos and, and pictures we're talking about you travel in that camper in this sort of uh yeah is it solar powered or something isn't it yeah yeah we have solar power it's called a kimbo it's designed by this really cool guy who's up um he's in washington just below the canadian border we got the 104th kimbo off the uh production line and uh it's super well designed it has a maritime heater because we were in really cold i mean i didn't realize how cold the grand canyon was going to be it snowed the first night but we have this unbelievable heater inside so we have that and then yeah we have solar power so that's how we uh, are charging our devices so that we can be in contact with you and um you know i could send in some updates of where we were and Did you uh, have a, you had a, a cell service there is that how you were able to communicate or is there internet or how does that work yeah, yeah we uh, by cell i mean a lot of places that we were at you know it was only you know uh via the you know cell service um sure. But, you know, then when you're, you know, I mean, we take advantage of, you know, we go into a Starbucks and you know, get on there. Right. <laughs> They're international. We, we, there was this hilarious one where we were in the Grand Canyon and um, there was this lodge and they said, uh, you know, you can get cell service over there. It's really, you can't get it. You can't get the internet here at the supermarket. So we go over to the lodge and I was at the desk and they said, no, you have to go to the cafe. And then the cafe was like, no, no, you have to go back to the front desk. And it was like, is there is there really so service? I mean, am I ever going to be connected? Yeah, when will she get tired of going back and forth? Which is the yeah, yeah, it was really yeah. You sort of had to be standing on a chair with your cell phone, you know, like ah, and, and then I, you know in the, in the lobby, it was quite funny. I mean, it's just so beautiful, and uh, I was envious as I looked at your pictures. Uh, you know, it's yeah. funny. I was looking at a lot of different things we might speak of today, and mm -hmm. many of the things that I was looking at, you were also looking at, which always makes me feel good because I think that you're really on top of the stuff even more than anyone i know I, I don't know where you want to start but i'm happy to start anywhere there is a lot going on yeah yeah there's a lot going on well the thing that i think is really important you know about the stories that we're going to discuss today is you know who are making the decisions you know who are making the really important decisions for us and uh, i don't think it's the right people and uh you know i'll describe the you know, two of the, well, actually there are three because the one that happened on April Fool's Day in Tennessee, we just can't not uh, cover that because it's so good. Um, but so we've got Republican states who want to ban uh, laboratory meat, you know, meat that is made via stem cells in laboratories. And it's really to, um, uh, you know, and, and this is a chicken that was the first uh, cultivated in a lab chicken that got FDA approval last year. And it's only available in a couple of restaurants, but you've got these uh, Republican uh, 
uh, states, Alabama, Arizona, Tennessee, Florida, you know, they're calling it, uh, you know, a war on ranching. You know, they get straight to this, you know, the vernacular, you know, war, it's a war. Uh, Ron DeSantis calls it, you know, part of this whole ideological agenda. And it's it's not. It's part of an agenda to, uh, you know, maintain life on Earth. Here's the thing. Food production creates 25 to 30 percent of global emissions. It is huge, Mark. I can't emphasize that enough. Shall I get closer to the camera and shake my head more? You know, it's it's really a big one. And of that, 60 percent comes from meat. So we have to do something about it. And what's crazy is, you know, we have all this technology that's happening in this country that, you know, and, and you know, you and I are totally, you know, in agreement on also the ethical issues. You know, the way we raise meat these days, it's not the way it used to be. These CAFOs, you know, these concentrated, you know, animal feeding operations are, you know, that you see as you go up the five freeway here, you know, are cruel and inhumane and we shouldn't be doing this to animals um and the problem is is that when you get politicians saying okay we're going to ban it i mean in alabama and arizona you know they're going to fine you if you sell this meat that the chicken so far like i said only available in a couple of restaurants but these these states are moving you know they're going to you know uh fine you know uh restaurants or supermarkets that sell it and uh, you know, this is a crazy direction to be going in. It's also happened in the EU, which I was kind of, um, I mean, I don't want it to be happening in the EU, but it makes me feel better about what's happening in America. But the EU also, so what happened was, it's called diversified protein intake. That's what they call this lab-grown meat. And it was one of the levers that they were going to be using. Look, I used American lever. I didn't say lever. I did that for you, Mark. Um <laughs> So it was one of the levers that they were going to be using to get to their goals for cutting uh, uh, emissions by 2040. But across Europe, farmers rose up, they protested, and they said, no, you know, we need to traditionally farm. And so now you've got Italy saying, okay, any restaurant or any business that sells this, you know, uh, lab meat will be fined 60,000 euros. On the flip side of this, guess who's going great guns with the meat? China. They are absolutely embracing this technology and they see it as, you know, the future. And what policy experts here are saying is how crazy to let, you know, Asia take the lead when we are poised to be the, you know, could be the leaders in this technology. And this is so interesting because OCB is saying China is the biggest meat producer, but the reality is that, and by the way, I think, you know, that two things can be true, that they are the biggest meat producer and they could also be out in front on this lab grown meat. And, and you know, I yeah. think that China has the kind of consumer population that's so vast that both those things can coexist. Yeah, yeah. And they're also there in this is what transition looks like is you you have both, you know, uh, sure. plates in the air at the same time. And, and this is sensible, because the other thing is, as policy experts say, you know, this is going to be a huge, you know, national security issue, food production, as the planet gets hotter, as it gets harder to, you know, grow crops, raise animals, as it gets harder for human workers to be outside and to be tending those crops. I mean, we have this thing now in the summer here in the Central Valley. It's too hot for workers to be outside. It's inhumane, you know. You, I mean, there were signs all over the Grand Canyon, you know, telling us, like, you know, once it gets to 105 degrees, you know, you're going to, you know, your brain is going to fry. You, you know, you've got to be super duper careful. Um, and obviously it wasn't those temperatures when we were there. We were there when it was snowing and cold. But but this, you know, hot temperatures are super bad for human beings. So so this, you know, these politicians uh, who, the, the thing that makes me, you know, um, it, the thing that's frustrating is we've got these elected officials, you know, judges and politicians, who are making these important policy decisions and they are not environmentally savvy. You know, they should not be the ones in charge. We should be looking to experts right now. We just had this thing happen. I'm going to transition now over to natural gas or is there before, anything? Before, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, 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 but before you get to, toward the transition, I just want to uh, spend yeah. just one second saying, um, because I'm seeing this in the uh, chat, 
that uh, I'm waiting for California. This is the kind of attitude Randy says, I'm waiting for California to ban the sale and consumption of meat in the state. I mean, I get it, that the, the notion somehow that, oh, you know, you guys who, you know, you want to, uh, you want lab grown meat now. I mean, why is lab grown meat a bad thing, Randy? Why do you somehow draw that connection between some ban on meat? I, I mean, I understand the general proposition, which is, well, meat's bad for the environment. Raising meat is bad for the environment. So maybe, and Randy's a very smart guy. I mean, I get long emails. He's, he's, he's not just some crackpot. And, but, but, but the idea somehow uh, that you're all of a sudden going to ban choice or ban this is, I think, where they go to make the argument, the absurdist argument, that uh, this is all a battle on your plate and what you can have in your plate and on your choice. Um, but the thing that, that speaks to what you're talking about, Belinda, and then I'll um, let you move on, uh, is the fact that many of these politicians and legislative bodies are trying to essentially take care of their constituents. So their constituents, many of them are farmers. So they are looking to do battle with anything that might take a chunk out of those farmers. It's the same way that Trump, when he took power, you'll recall, he embraced dirty energy and he wanted coal producers to not only get additional tax incentives and special protections and even subsidies of all sorts that he was introducing, but he wanted to penalize alternative energy, solar energy and other and wind energy, et cetera. So he, that was all an effort just to prop up what was a dying business. There is an inevitability to this that is being propped up by these legislative bodies that are just trying to take care of their constituencies. And it's big ag, honestly, it's, it's money that they're taking yeah, yeah. care of. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But, but in taking care of those constituents, they're not taking care of their constituents who want the choice to be able to choose. Do I want to eat traditionally grown meat or do I care enough about what's going on? And am I concerned enough that I want to eat meat that's been grown in a lab as an alternative? And that's the argument against what these Republicans are doing is that you really need to leave it up to the consumers. They need to have the choice. Um, so. And, you, and you see this too. Mars says raising meat ain't wrong for the environment. It's a new human experiment after thousands of years of hunting and eating meat. Uh, I don't get that. Again, that's like trying to put a good face on it, maybe. I don't know. I mean, it, 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 certainly after all this time, you can see the industrialized farming that is done. You can't see Mars. You can't see the downside of that. It seems so clear. Look, you know, I'm, you know, everyone, when they find out I'm from New Zealand is super excited and like, I mean, I had someone yesterday saying, oh, pure New Zealand, pure New Zealand. Well, New Zealand ain't so pure right now because we have so many dairy cattle that are uh, peeing in our waterways that we've got this unbelievable eutrophication happening in lakes, in the ocean, where the rivers come out full of this, you know, nitrate heavy water. And so tourists are arriving in New Zealand and expecting pure, beautiful, green New Zealand and going to a lake they want to swim in or the go this gorgeous river that I swam in as a kid. You can't go in it now because of the eutrophication, because of all the cattle. It's it's the magnitude of it. And no one is saying, hey, you can't have traditionally you know, raised meat. We're just saying have this alternative and and make this um, industry right sized for the planet. We have to get right sized for the size of the planet we're on. And right now what we have are these industries that are that are too big and too industrialized. And you know, this is it's not helping us. And you the, know, the last word on this I would say is what's amazing to me is I would think this would be greeted with excitement. I mean, it, this is unreal. This changes everything. It feeds everyone forever. It does it without cruelty, without suffering. It does mm -hmm. it without the environmental impact. You'd think it'd be great, but no, it is getting insane pushback from those who are parts of legislative bodies and even just the body politic. It's like, no, nah, you know, it's just, don't tell me I want my, it's old school. It's so we're so loath to push away from those beliefs which we've clung to and lifestyles that we've clung to for so long. Yeah, yeah. And look, I have I have absolute sympathy with people who feel threatened by change. And we've talked about it before. Psychologically, human beings, we're not good with change. But here's the thing. We, we're on a cushion that is getting thinner, you know, and it's going to be easier to maneuver while we have this cushion of time. But, you know, 
you know, newsflash, once that cushion gets down to, you know, uh, something paper thin, ding dong, that ain't no cushion. You know, when our backs are against the wall, it's going to be more difficult to make these changes. So what I see, you know, and what I find, you know, difficult to, you know, be watching is that, you know, that cushion is getting thinner and this is our opportunity to make these changes. And there are so many people who are, you know, doing this stuff. You know, we've talked about, you know, the casein that they're now making in a fermentation process so we can make, you know, mozzarella cheese and have delicious uh, pizzas, but, you know, not have this, you know, really intense dar dairying going on, which I have just described to you as ruining beautiful, pure green New Zealand. So um, it, it's it's really, uh, you know, it's it's crunch time. And it's not, I'm not saying, you know, completely abolish one, but, but you know, get one right sized with, the, you know, how big the planet is and, you know, how much water there is, how much resources, how much methane can we afford, you know, cows to be, you know, burping into the atmosphere. Great, great point. All right, moving on. So uh, we spent too much time on that. I'm not helping you because I'm jumping on board and making it longer. So go ahead. No, 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 it's totally fine. So the other thing that's happened, which is, you know, I just think, you know, it's this is crazy. So the California Restaurant Association went after Berkeley's bill. Berkeley was the first city that banned gas piping, you know, hookups into new homes. And they did this because you know, the way we heat our homes, that is responsible for 13% of our global emissions. And as we know, you know, natural gas, methane and ethane is 24 times stronger than CO2 as a greenhouse gas. So it's really important. And when Berkeley did this, 140 other uh, US cities and local governments also banned, the, you know, the hookup of natural gas into new buildings. And, and you know, I was thinking about the, these, uh, the restaurant association, because you know, okay, so it got overturned by three judges on the Ninth District, um, you know, U.S. Court of Appeals. The the Berkeley bill was written in such a way that they were able to overturn it. Berkeley has said it's halted immediately. They will repeal it. It will be gone. Other places say our bills against natural gas are stronger. We think we'll be able to fight it. All over the U.S., it's being fought by, you know, the restaurant industry, um, home builders, and, of course, natural gas, <laughs> in the natural gas industry. But will those restaurateurs, when, you know, say cut to, you know, 20, 30 years in the future where it's so hot, people only want to eat salad and not, you know, flambe this, saute that, will they rue the day that they fought against natural gas? Because here's the other thing, I, you know, I, I'm always bleating on about my induction stove. It is faster than gas. It's faster than the usual electric. Everyone said, OK, but induction stoves, induction top, you know, first of all, it didn't have the visual that you get with natural gas. And that's what chefs love. Well, it does have a visual now. It has a red, you know, I know when I've got it cranked up to max because I have a big red line that tells me that. I mean, you know, it's not a flame, but I can tell, you know, that I'm flaming it. So, yeah, yeah. you know, it's like just, you know, yeah. I mean, look, see, you can see that that uh, part is on, you know, the max. Um, so, you know, come on, guys. I mean, it's, you know, it's. I get it. We're visual friend. and all this. And again, it's like, as you say, change is tough. But this yeah, apparently yeah. it works really well. I. I I I don't have it yet. I hear about it through you, and I I really would love to get it get it going. You know. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I I am I'm a, and also now because of the IRA, the Inflation Reduction Act. Thank you, President Biden. You know, you can get all these rebates on all these energy efficient appliances. You know, if you want to put in, you know, the heat pump. Uh, if you want to put in a you know induction stove, so you know make the most of it while you can. But I just have to you know. T so with, there was one. So here here we've got you know the the policy um, being decided by you know politicians who aren't environmentally savvy and these judges. But we had this classic on April Fool's Day: Tennessee banned geoengineering. So a Republican. Uh, led, uh, you know, state legislator legislature said, okay, no more geoengineering. What is geoengineering? Geoengineering is modifying the atmosphere to try and combat climate change. But what was crazy were the, um, uh, they weren't facts, were the fictions that they were bringing up to justify it. So chemtrails, they were alluding to chemtrails and the chemtrail conspiracy, which says that condensation trail you see coming out of those jet engines. Hey, guys, that's not condensation. That 
That is actually government chemicals that are being sprayed on us to uh, control our behavior and alter our bodies. That's what they alluded to. I mean, there was a Democrat who said, you know, okay, it's Sasquatch, you know, we're ruining his environment. I mean, it was it was kind of wild that it happened on Monday, April 1st, but um, they banned <laughs> geoengineering. And, and here's the thing about geoengineering. So very nascent technology. Um, and, it, you know, it is happening because we have all these other industries that refuse to change. So scientists and innovators are going, okay, we have to cool the planet down. Uh, right now, Iceland, and this was on the front page of the New York Times on Sunday, you know, they are just hoovering. They're just sucking the CO2 out of the atmosphere and storing it underground. And they have this volcanic rock that it can um, adhere to. So they're doing that in the San Francisco Bay right now. We have a ship that has, um, uh, it's a really crazy looking device. Oh, I should have sent you the uh, the link to it, but they are shooting up aerosols and the aerosols, so it's water and it has uh, salt in it and they're shooting it up. Basically it's called um, cloud brightening. So you send up this aerosol to uh, clouds that are over the ocean and it makes the clouds whiter and it's so that they will reflect more of the sunlight and the heat back out into the atmosphere and you know it will slow down heating on the planet and why is all this geoengineering happening it's happening because we won't stop um you know using the, um uh, fossil fuels eating meat that you know gets grown or you know uh yeah yeah there it is I mean, it's just interesting because the resistance to it is uh, was extreme in this Tennessee, you know, lawmakers uh, vote. Um, mm -hmm. The idea somehow then that okay, well, let me just review. So you're not for any changes in fossil fuel consumption. You're not for any alternative energy, like wind or solar. You're not for electric vehicles of any kind that would maybe reduce on some level the footprint, although that electricity has to come from somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, you're not for this geoengineered uh, meat. You're not for, so I, I see you, so you're not really for any change at all. You're not for new emission standards. This is all, I think, applicable in Tennessee where this is coming out. Of. And you're not for geoengineering. So what are you, what are you for? for? <laughs> I mean, you keep yeah. looking to the science community to get you out of this. But then when the science community comes up with something, you guys go, no, 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 no. I like my life exactly the way I have it. Yeah. It's just, uh, I mean, it's, you know, they're going to have to be some choices made. Mm. Yeah, this is this is the thing. And, and, and you know, it, I mean, I can't stress it enough. You know, the we have this, you know, the cushion, the window, you know, it's open right now, but it's, you know, it's closing. The cushion is going down to, you know, paper thin. We we need to embrace some of these changes. You know, yes, we always do it kicking and screaming, but the longer we take, the more painful it will be and the hotter the planet will be, you know, and that just, you know, that just doesn't seem like smart thinking, and it's really not taking care of your constituents. That's the thing that- Right, you know, it's taking care of the upstanding. moneyed constituents, which is really what- yeah. But, but uh, Mars uh, says this, even if we stop, how can we outweigh the pollution from countries like China and India without regulation? Uh, again, we can look at China, this is a very old school way of looking at it. I'm not saying you're wrong, Mars, but I would say that look at China and India and you will see innovation there. They are not just consumers. They are not just polluters. They are those things. They're, they're definitely polluters, okay? No question about it. But they're also making innovation. And Belinda just noted one of the ways that China is really out in front on, uh, on some of this stuff. So I don't know, I think you can't paint China and India as just polluters anymore without at least acknowledging the fact they're out in front on green stuff as well. Oh, yeah. The stuff that's happening in, you know, those two countries as far as small electric vehicles, you know, three-wheeled vehicle, three -wheeled vehicles um, you know, small cars, uh, motorcycles. I mean, the innovations that are happening there, that replaceable battery, you know, so you, you, you know, you drive in with your tuk-tuk and, you know, you don't have to wait for your battery to charge. You just, there's a recharged one that they let you, you know, swap out your used battery for and away you go. So you don't lose one minute of business time. I mean, all that stuff is, and, and also because of the huge populations there. Yes, uh, India does have some terribly dirty coal that they're still burning um but the other thing is 
the more we show leadership here, the more uh, bargaining power we have with those two, you know, hugely populated uh, countries. So, um, you know, yes, it's 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 um, it swings and roundabouts. It's 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 a really difficult moment in human history, but we have to. We have to make reality our friend. We really yeah, do. We have to respond in some way. Uh, really quickly, Edward is asking, uh, Belinda, what's worse, air travel or eating meat? Um, I can, meat, I can, meat. I'm sorry. Meat. Yeah, exactly. meat. It's meat, not meat. even yeah. close. Yeah, not yeah, yeah. The, the air travel is responsible for 3% of global emissions. And, and our food is, is way bigger. And, you know, meat, as I was explaining before, you know, 60% of the 30% of total emissions. So, you know, almost two-thirds of... Um, uh, so, you know, if if we're looking at 30%, you know, 20% is coming from meat. So, yeah, cutting down on meat, huge, absolutely uh, huge. So, Belinda, I have to wrap up here pretty uh, quickly. Uh, is there anything, one last thing you want to give us on the way out? I think... Uh... Well, uh, you know, I do always like to talk about positive stuff, but I, we should talk about geoengineering next week, you know, just because of all these things that are happening, you know, that, that kind of are good because they are going to, you know, uh, get the CO2 out. But but also, I mean, there's a there's a lot that goes with it. But let's let's look at that next week. because I love it one. because, as you suggested, the New York Times did a big piece on it and it was really quite impressive. And the whole idea that uh, and you touched on it before this uh, sequestration that can take place, uh, carbon sequestration. I'm, I, I'm anxious to have you uh, speak of that as well. Uh, great to have you back. Welcome back. Uh, Belinda Weymouth, everybody. Thanks, Belinda. That's It's the Planet Stupid for today. More It's the Planet Stupid. No, no, no. It's the Planet Stupid. Next time, only on The Mark Thompson Show. Mm-hmm. Great to have uh, the Mark Thompson. Great show. to have Belinda back. And we have to uh, wrap up around here. It's kind of crazy since... Uh, We've had, um, I think you'd agree with me, Albert, such a successful Mark's Madness. Now, I wonder, a Kamish, if I can just press you into service here at the very end of the show, you can speak to what will be the uh, protocol tomorrow. So tonight, it'll be viewable to everyone who won, right, in the community section? Um... Or not, or not. I mean, you'll. Oh, no, you'll we're, take going, the, we're going to debut the winner. You can, like voting will be like normal, and then tomorrow we'll just announce the winner. Okay, so tomorrow Albert, as commissioner, will uh, bestow upon someone, and it will likely be a single winner. Well, if Chit 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 wins, there might be several uh, several tied for first. How will it work? It's very close right now. Yeah, we'll see. I'll see how um how the, the dynamics work because not all of them have the the drops going further. And the best right. possible it's, scores are so. I might have to crunch some numbers. It'll tomorrow. come down to uh, points, and uh, that's why Albert's here. So again, but this is a vote going on in the community section of our YouTube channel right now. You'll either vote for... There's always been, in this country, 30 to 35% idiots. Or you'll vote for... Ch -ch 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 That's right. It's chit 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 versus idiots. There's always been, in this yeah. country, 30 to 35% idiots. And... Uh, Ch -ch -ch I don't know. I mean, it, it is close. 56% idiots right now to 43% chit chit chit. But... Anything if, could if, happen. If it wins. We're going to have a silent show tomorrow in, in, <laughs> in true fashion of chit, chit, chit. Um, I am uh, so excited, and I'm going to uh, I'm going to miss all of this, and most of all, I'm going to miss now. Uh, I can't I'm gonna miss that. Mark's madness. That's right. I can't believe it. All right, everybody, vote for one or the other. You'll vote for uh, chit, 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 or you'll vote for... There's always been, in this country, 30 to 35% idiots. My bracket blew up in the first couple of weeks. Um, maybe yours did, too. Maybe you don't have a bracket at all. You don't have to have a There's bracket. There's always to... been, in this country, 30 to 35% <laughs> idiots. Yeah. Vote for either till midnight. You don't need to have a bracket. You just need to be on here and be able to vote. I guess you need a Gmail address. Is that how you are a, a member of this whole YouTube universe? Yeah. So yeah, be a subscriber. Uh, you could vote. You could just if you just happen to stumble upon our page. I know there's a whole bunch of agents of chaos out there just voting for all the. <laughs> all I the think idiots is going drop. for it. This is good. Oh, yeah. I love it. It's idiots and chit, chit, chit. Who would have thought? I definitely thought chit, chit, chit would be here, but I did not think idiots would be here. Wow. Tomorrow is a big show. There are some major legal moves going on in the Florida case with Donald Trump. That's the 
documents case, it's oftentimes called, or the espionage case. We'll talk to David Katz about that. I mean, this is a major, major, major stuff that may happen with that. So we'll get to that with Katz tomorrow. Also tomorrow, Mark Harris, the Oscar-winning filmmaker, has a new book of short stories. He'll come through. What? And, yeah, and Anthony Davis from the Midas Touch, our favorite Britisher, he comes through tomorrow. It's a guest-heavy show. And, of course, we crown a winner in Mark's Madness. There's never been wow. anything like this. What a show it's going to be. I'm Shadow Stevens for the Mark Johnson Show. Bye-bye. The After Party Live is going down right now with Kim. Out of so time. Check bye it bye. out. Thanks, Albert. Thanks, Kim. Till tomorrow. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.